High ranked perverts covering up monsters. This is the crazy guy that I was told about. A man in his 50s and in a uniform cap waves his arms like a madman shouting out weird propaganda phrases. As he sees you, he falls silent. Hey gourmet, I have a fat lamb barbecue and an egg. Will you fry? What will you fry and what will you put aside for your badminton? I'm not sure whether this is code. Um, why are you offering me food all of a sudden? Are you a cook? <laughs> The man smiles broadly and grasps your arm. Oh, St. Helena, you don't know what I'm talking about. You're not part of it. You're innocent. You have to help me. What kind of help do you need, ma'am? The man heaves a sigh of relief. Apparently he's been looking for someone to confide in. Is he, like, broken? So he's, like, saying the wrong... He's, like... He seems to be conveying hellos and, like, generally what he wants, but not with the right phrases. Oh, so I finally found a listener. So, did I tell you? I probably didn't. That until recently, I worked as a postman in Crescent Ocean. Oh, no, she's insane. Well, it doesn't matter, since I told you now, anyway. Uh, so what? Go on. The yeah, man looks around warily and comes closer. Once before work, when I was opening other people's letters in my room as usual... <laughs> but I found... Wait, wait, you read other people's letters? Man gives him another smile. Well, what can I say? I'm a perfectionist. Before the war, we got paid extra for this. And now I continue working for the good cause. I'll be it for free. There's no other way. What else can you find out if it's a letter or a CIA code? A parcel or an acid bomb? A magazine for kids? Or a plan to overthrow the Central Committee of the Communist Party? But we're not talking about my diligence. But what I found... <laughs> Your diligence. What was it you found? A letter. A very ordinary letter. It seemed simple talk. A food, sport, cinema. But the longer I read it, the clearer it became it was a coded message. And the words had totally different meaning. Look at this phrase, for example. What made your Kirill Arkadovich so angry so weak? He's gone berserk today during the badminton game with chicken barbecue. So he had to dispose of three portions. The man clearly has the talent. Pity he doesn't allow to record the games. Weird, isn't it? Isn't it? Uh, maybe he's just an eccentric? The man goggles at you angrily. Nonsense. It says dispose of. What kind of badminton is it is that makes food go rotten? And what's the thing about recording? Listen on if you want to understand what it means. Well, uh, slightly odd, but slightly odd indeed, to put it mildly. Bear in mind that Kirill Andreevich is a successful merchant, a rich man from the distant city of Trudograd. The letter came from Paragon, from a barbecue shop that belongs to Ivan Kurdiev and Anton Uchvakin. This shop is incidentally very popular among the Paragon merchants and the guards, and the Chamber of Commerce members as well. I know for a fact that some big fish from Krasnosamonia visit it regularly, even though we're not on particularly good terms with Paragon. What about this barbecue? It makes people put political clashes aside. Maybe it's just a damn good barbecue? I have a suspicion this barbecue is no barbecue at all. There's another exact extract. Got a young lamb barbecue, perfect for a construction site, garden works, or badminton. To be fair, that does sound a bit weird. I mention badminton quite often. It's Possibly code for something? Oh no, the insanity is catching. <laughs> Weird, does it matter where to eat barbecue? Oh, frown and crush your arms on your chest. Lots of words, aren't you? I'd be too. Sounds like nonsense, but if a barbecue is not a barbecue, but let's say a slave, a lamb is a man, and a badminton is, God forbid, some barbarity, a sacrifice, a murder, secret experiments, it can be anything. Now, the same phrase in my translation. I've got a young male slave, will be good for construction works, working in the garden, and the last thing they call badminton, what were you saying at? To be fair, <laughs> this does sound like it makes... <laughs> yep, the insanity's definitely cut. It does make much more sense. I can see you understand their slang a bit better now. There's a line which sent me shaking through the night. On Wednesday, we got a chicken for barbecue and an egg for good measure. These two are hard to divide. Luckily, we quickly found a gourmet from the holes for the barbecue. And three nights later, an egg was ordered for a badminton evening in the bunker. Yeah, this sounds like really shitty code. Yeah, what the fuck? All oh, the badminton even in the bunker. I can't help but feel this postman might be speaking the truth. If a man, <laughs> yeah, and an egg. 
the man's eyes are filled with unspeakable sorrow. Yes, I came to the same conclusion. So my investigations. Another letter from the same Anton and Ivan from Paragon revealed they buy empty videotapes in this video theatre. So let's add to this badminton creepy footage of an unknown nature. All in all, what goes on in their barbecue shop is the closest thing to hell that you can imagine. Tell me, are you ready to go explore this place? Proof of corruption in the establishment. Many things will come to light, and I'll pay a modest sum for this. From the remaining money earned by the sweat of my brow, I'd give up anything for justice. And if you choose to do it, you can use this. The man gives you a crumpled letter sticking out of a torn envelope. I can't promise anything, but I'll see what I can do. I have just one word for you. Thanks. This is the letter. This is an example of their correspondence. I only dared to nick one. Do you know where Peregrine is? Oh, it doesn't matter. I'll mark it for you. Former postman snatches away your map and marks Peregrine. See, it sounds like he's good enough to not burn holes in it or do weird stuff on it. And I'll go on my campaign, raising people's awareness. We talk some more? Let's have a chat. But remember, darkness never sleeps. That's that darkness again, like that old woman said. What's your name, man? Haven't I told you yet? My name's Arsene. Arsene Sajin. Don't tell me your name now. I'm weak. I'll tell you everything under torture. I'll tell you everything under torture. I'm too scared of pain. Ever since I was a child, but a neighbor's pig bit me. No, no one. <laughs> what are you doing here? Man smiles bitterly, raises his cap, and strokes his receding hair. Nothing special. Just gone mad now and let down my entire team and do myself to poverty by spreading lies about the wasteland's most honest politicians and profiteers. At least what, that's what they'll tell you. Don't believe them. I won't. And what's this place? A video theatre. You can watch films here. A small fry in the scheme I've discovered, but I don't think the owner even knows who buys the empty tapes and why. By the way, I used to campaign right in front of the Chamber of Commerce until they kicked me out. I am not surprised. Have you heard any interest in rumours? There's only one thing that occupies my mind now. The dreadful secret I've found out, but it deserves a talk of its own. As for minor rumours, well, the guard at the Chamber of Commerce's bunker where I used to campaign complained to me as he was kicking me out that he didn't get to see his dear missus that often because of guys like me made his life complicated, and he said she was a rare beauty, so he's worried she might find someone else. Hmm, I wonder whether that can be exploited to get access to the chamber. Anywho, let's have a look, actually, inside this... Movie theatre. Well, a bit of lag all of a sudden. This must be a complicated theatre? Yeah, it's not lagging anywhere else. That's weird. Oh well, lag doesn't matter too much in this game anyway. <laughs> Probably other chairs and that. <laughs> God. A black haired young man takes his eyes off the N1 issue of 1985 The Art of Cinema magazine with Mikhail Ulanov as Marshall Zukov on the cover and smiles widely. Welcome to the video parlor. Fancy watching a movie? Uh, why not? What's on today? Like melodramas? Ain't it lucky then that today's a melodrama day? Only today, an exclusive screening of The Lover of Desire. Interested? Ticket's only 30 rubles. Uh, do I actually have to watch it? Why not? Here's the money. The room with the TV set is mostly filled with aging women and one lean, balding man with a trim beard and slightly open mouth which gives him a look of constant surprise. <laughs> you spend the 90 mi next 90 minutes in the world of romance, dramatic meetings, partings, and eternal love. When the film ends, you raise from your seat. <laughs> no, I'm not crying. I'm not weeping. <laughs> Second, let me sit back. Where'd everyone else go? Fancy watching a movie? Uh, hey, what's the man screaming outside? Ah, it's an okay case. He got it into his head that slave owners for some reason buy tapes from me. Crazy accusation, eh? Don't believe him. I might as well say there are some bunkers in the wasteland where secret experiments are carried out. Will it become true? <laughs> Hell knows. What's on today? Maybe next time. Got a couple of questions. Okay, let's talk. Gotta love personality. Where'd you get the tapes? Once I found a videotape store, it was my initial equity, so to speak. Now I've created a whole system to provide me with new tapes. I know some stockers and merchants who deal in rare antiques. Are there many visitors? Depends on what film or genre screens today. Sometimes there are scores of them. Sometimes I'm the only person in the cinema. Uh, market laws indeed. What's your collection in highest demand? Action movies, comedies, quite predictably. Well, you'd be surprised, but the morning aerobics for women is very popular too. Beats me. It's no plot even. <laughs> And have you heard anything interesting recently? I've heard that some guys in the south made a real movie. I'd like to see it. I have to explain to people every day it hasn't reached us yet. That'd be pretty cool to see, actually. 
wonder whether there's some place we can get a receipt. Reminds me a bit of uh, Fort New Vegas with um, also the, the slave trading thing with Boone and Silver the Jane or Jane or something like that. Yeah, I'm just gonna have a look, see whether there is anything I can get with this. I don't necessarily want to steal anything, I just want to have a look. So this guy might buy cassettes and that. That doesn't look. It looks weirdly functional to be in this place. <laughs> Nothing. And this is a weird room indeed. That looks like circuits. What are they actually? Is that circuits? A oh, microchip. Doesn't look very micro to me though. Batteries. More chips, I guess. Yep. Must be repairs to TVs, but nothing I can see in terms of receipts. Mm. Oh yeah, does he sell anything? Nope. It says turn in night. Let's get a move on then. Getting a little bit hungry again. Right, so I've not made it that far actually. I'm just this far away. There's quite a lot of stuff. Jesus. Must be the brothel. I hope there aren't wolves in the city. I've heard about being stabbed to death in alleyways, actually. Hmm. Oh, I thought there was someone talking, but it must be the TV. Guess I can't cross that. And there's nothing over here. No, oh, it's just the rear. Let's see whether I can actually enter any of these buildings. I guess they're just places for the NPCs. Hello? Stretches in this feet. Oops, not what I wanted to do. Can I move past? Them? Oh, there we go. A plump, red cheeked woman in her 30s looks at you with mock reproach. Her arms on her hips, her head cocked to one side. Ahem, I'm sorry, what do you think you're doing inviting yourself into other people's homes like this? Looking for adventures? What if I'm actively looking? So, insolent, you should be ashamed of yourself. Lowers her eyes. Ahem, you wanted something? <laughs> what the fuck? An adventure for two. A very hard adventure. I'm very private. The woman rolls her eyes and laughs primly, covering her mouth with one hand. Tell me then, does your wife know you make passes at poor housewives here? If you don't tell her, my husband will, as he's explaining why he shot you. <laughs> what a husband! His gorgeous wife waits at home whilst he gallivants God knows where. Well, he's good or bad beyond the point. What man decides he's my husband? And he's not just some cat handed drunkard. One winks at you mischievously. Aren't you afraid? I don't know whether she's a housewife or not. <laughs> no, and if you try something stupid, he'll be dead. Ah. <sighs> Eh, uh, why not? I might get enthralled in some kind of quest. Could be interesting. Some sort of hobby for me, seeing other men's wives. You speak confidently and in a very seductive manner. Ooh. The woman gives a flirtful laugh and passes a figure over your chest. Oh, what's this? Are you asking me out? Well, we could go to the tavern. The woman smiles sadly and shakes her head. How vulgar. A tavern. The city has many eyes. She can't even imagine. It's a stupid idea, really. I'm married and I love my husband. Stop it. Why is that crass nose in you full of pickup artists and gigolos all of a sudden? <laughs> Don't answer. Forget it, okay? What can I say? Suck about something else. <laughs> sure, ask all you want. Anything is better than dying here from boredom. I have a couple of questions. <laughs> What's your name, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, I'm not really keen at giving my personal details out. My name is Boris Slava Ivanova, or just Borya, or Slava. And yours? My name is... Khalid with special need. Victor the Satisfying again. <laughs> Considering the circumstances. Nice to meet you, but <laughs> that's the same name. And who is your husband? Th this is confidential. The woman gives you a playful smile, but says no more. Ah, oh, come on. I'm your friend, but your secret will be safe with me. All right, you convinced me. He's a guard at the bunker of the Chamber of Commerce. Aha! 
He loves me, I know. He worries about me. He's always worried, but he has less and less time for me. I see. I keep this in mind. Another question. But you usually do. You know it already. Just busy. Tell me about the city. There have been many tourists coming recently. The woman doesn't look at you, but rather through you as though she says that. Probably scrutinising the past only she can see. I see. Have you heard any interesting rumours? Nothing but utter horrors. You probably like spooky stories, but I've had to sleep alone most days of the week. After I hear about worms that get under your skin through your private parts, about Hesperus Star and the creepy tunnel right here in the area, I barely stifle the, the desire to run to my neighbours for comfort, so don't even start. Okay, creepy tunnel. I want to go. You have to handle the burden yourself. I'm gonna go. I need a Lenin statue, I think. I'm just about 100% certain. Why look at Lenin statue when we've got actual Lenin living amongst us? Just on the outskirts of the city. Ah. Judging from that, it is in fact a mushroom and not a newt cloud. And a mycelium, I take it. And a guard who looks like he means business. Yeah, he doesn't seem to have a weapon. Oh, those doors look super old. Yeah, I see what you mean about the carving though. I wonder whether that was there before the war. A bearded man at the entrance to the huge building smiles friendly as he sees you. He wears a quality leather vest and smells surprisingly good compared to other wastelanders you've met so far. Hello friend, how are you? Not bad. Oops, let's have a look. What the hell? Stimulants. He's got a decent amount of money actually. Hey mate, you want a beetroot? <laughs> Fills with energy, increases virility. <laughs> Doesn't work in combat. Aww. Can't complain. Are you interested in the Mycelium Society? Or just passing by? A friend of the society by the name of Igor has sent me to see... Oh, it's... Wait. A friend of the society by the name of me has sent me to see... That guy's name wasn't Igor as well, was it? Might have been. Oh, glad to hear. Go inside. Find Ariadna. She's always happy to talk to you newcomers. I'll let you enter in a second. What's his name, Igor? Huh. Tell me more about this society of yours. I don't think I can tell you more than other members of the society. To avoid going into too much detail, what would you like to know? Would you like to hear about the four principles that our ideality is based upon? Or maybe you're interested in our history? Let's go history, I know about the four principles. A long time ago, right after the war, a scientific group from far away established the mycelium in this very building. The guard points at the building behind his back. Many years have passed since then. The old ones have gone, replaced by new ones. Our sacred army fights for progress and science. United, we drive, we stride towards development. So, pretty much it was just after the war. Then. So that's some impressive work for post-war architecture, I guess. Uh, and what does your organisation do here, in brief? We do charity and scientific research. Everyone has a certain function, but we're all equal. Hmm. Let's have a look inside then. One, two, there's a few people there actually. Oh, it does look very culty. What the hell? No upstairs though. Right, let's speak to the first. Let's say before I piss one off, I sense the nice again. <laughs> Is that a fake mustache? In front of you stands a young man with a bushy mustache. As he sees you, he turns to you and spreads his arms. Sorry, I'm a bit busy. Talk to my co workers. Okay, nice talking to you. How do I get to that one? Oh, they got actual working cameras. Oh, guess I can't go in there. It must be. Oh, security office. That's why, isn't it? Wow, this place seems legit. What about this person? Oh, whoops. He's got an abacus, so he's doing some math. I don't know what he's doing, actually. I find. Yeah, these people look weirdly nice. Is he wearing hair gel? A fine looking man in a blue shirt sits in front of you. He tears his eyes off the calculations he's been doing before your arrival and smiles friendly. 
Welcome to the Mycelium. I'm the organization's official merchant. How can I help you? That sounds too much good stuff. More than 9 mil rounds. 762, hmm. How much do you give me for a beetroot, my good man? <laughs> Hmm, yeah, I don't think he has enough money for that. Uh, how about answering a couple of questions? You know, I'm busy here with my applied mathematics. Perhaps you wanted to buy something? No, I gotta go already. Goodbye. So just one person I can talk to then. In front of you stands a well-dressed young woman. As she sees you, she smiles and turns to you. Hello, my name is Ariadna. Can I help you? Uh, yes, the guard at the entrance told me to turn to you. Ah yes, that's right. You got a reference as far as I understand. I'm glad to hear that. But first, I'd like to ask you a question. The woman's face becomes serious. I see you're a strong young man. Do you think it makes you privileged in comparison with other wastelanders? Uh, yeah, I guess if you think about it. The woman smiles broadly and nods. That's right. You're strong and brave, but not everyone is so lucky. I'm glad you understand this. Another important question then. Do other people deserve to have the same privileges? Uh, yeah, I guess. That's true. We're not all equal, but we should all become equal. May the strong help the poor. You clearly have a feeling of the principles of love, but tell me this. Do you believe that people should stop their sort of disputes and unite like a big family? Well, I guess it'd make it less likely for mutants to just be destroying all people like they seem to be doing. Uh... Of course, they do have to be a butcher, a butcher for them. I'm ready to embrace mankind, all people are family to me. Yes, yes, the principle of unity is strong in you, I'm so happy to hear that. Now the final question. Are you afraid of dying? Are you ready to give up your life? Uh, I'm not afraid of inevitable death, but I'm not ready to die either. I regret to say you don't fully understand the importance of the principle of life. Spend a day reflecting on this and return once you've found the right answer. What the? I'll come back tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to load that. Yeah, I guess actually that's a better option. Frankly, I don't want to die, but I would for a good cause. A sincere smile appears on the woman's face. Exactly. Your own death should not scare you, for the death of one is not a threat to the whole. You'd be better afraid of others' death. That's what destroys the whole. Yeah, but your own death also affects the whole itself. And other people would be sad if you died. So technically, you should be afraid of your own death as much as you are of everyone else, as if we're all equal, right? You proved that the four principles are strong in your heart. You deserve to be part of the Mycelian community. Uh, I'm flattered, but what now? <laughs> Look, you understand everything, but are you ready to prove it with deeds instead of words? Are you ready for a donation of 30 rubles and 3 tins? As you see, I'm not asking for much, but your money and food can help those who like them. I don't even think I have tins. What if I don't add them myself? But I can see that you can get them. Life clearly is no mystery to you. You have some inner strength. Who exactly will this help? We use the money to buy books from Abraham the bookseller so that ordinary people can learn how to read and write. As for food, we give it to the hungry on the streets of Krasnos and Moynihan around. Gotcha. Move we'll out later. Weird. I haven't found a person who sells just normal food, actually. Unless she seems to buy it from their store, in which case it's the sell things a sham. Go speak to some workers, then. I wonder whether these people are the community of it, or... <laughs> Hello? Yeah, no one wants to talk in the dark. Let's see if there's anyone actually awake. That's a nope. That's a nope. And that's a note. Okay. It's nice that all the NPCs have beds and that. It makes the game feel like better. About that kind of stuff, you know? But it's a bit oblivion y in the way that everyone has like a life that they get back to, or I guess, you know, Elder Scrolls y. Or Fallout y. <laughs> and of course, the marketplace is not open at night. But the casino and brothel. Oh, is that the driver place? I'm not totally sure. Ah. Yeah, I guess um, I've only got this place, that place, is that like a farm? And then the boat to do, and also I guess this, which is the chamber. 
Hmm. Let's speak to this place first. Actually, this place. Never mind. Ah, definitely looks like it could... Wait, brothel? Yes? No? What's going on here? This... <laughs> yep, he looks like he actually looks sitting down, to be fair. A sullen man with a mousy moustache looks at you from under a red lamp. He seems to be disgruntled. Then again, it might be his permanent state. He heaves a deep sigh and says in a tragic voice, Welcome to the city hotel. Are you looking for a room? Uh, yeah, I could do with some 600 minutes of sleep. We can arrange this. A room will cost you 50 rubles, breakfast included. I hope you're not allergic to rat meat. Our suite is occupied, I'm afraid, but the standard room is quite decent too. Uh, I've changed my mind. Uh, let me ask you a question. <laughs> okay, ask away. What's life like in the city? I could say it's tolerable, but should I? I don't think so. To me, life in Krasnos Des Moines resembles a spoonful of jam with a fly stuck in it. It looks nice, but I wouldn't recommend eating it. What, the fly or the jam? How'd you end up the hotel owner? My mother and I opened the hotel after the war. I wanted to leave it and walk the wasteland in search of my fortune, but mother insisted she needed my help, and when she died I ended up inheriting this burden. Where can I go now? My travels are over before they've even begun. Cucumber, Brian. You're from Hangover. Don't give up just yet. And why so sad? <laughs> why should I be merry? I live alone, hard up at times, with no time to travel either. A couple of times I visited Fogolevka and Otredno, even that was fun. Ugh, this is no life, this is torture. One, one of these days. Uh, enough. Come on, it's not so bad. I, for example, am going for a walk. Heard any rumors? I heard about the famous mutant hunter, Riblin from Silesia. He has a magazine of silver bullets for mutants and simple lead bullets for gangsters and raiders. Must be an interesting person of fun. Ah, yeah. A good old uh, Geralt. <laughs> but yeah. Hope I'll meet him one day. So is this where the publisher is? This guy looks like he's mean business. Hello there. I see a huge guard near the room entrance. If she come closer, he blocks your path. Stop right there. RTM is busy and wants us to visit us. Who are you? Just curious. Can I come in? The guard changes his grip to a shotgun to a more comfortable one. His huge gun looks like a toy in his large hands. If you don't have business, you can't come in. Yep, I don't think I do. So is this the publisher? 